Good morning. Welcome to Grumpy Sheep Happy Llama. We're spinning a knitting podcast in Eastern Ontario. So welcome to our new viewers and welcome to our old viewers that continue our to watch. Our returning viewers. Are we, that's the word. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> returning viewers. I bet you're old. <laughs> yes, that's true. Anyway, so I am, but yeah, you may not be. So uh, yes, anyway, welcome to our podcast. Today we'll talk to you about knitting and spinning, and I think that's mostly it today, hey? Today, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's Christmas, ho well, not even Christmas holidays. It's getting close to Christmas holidays, so we have lots of stuff that we yeah. have to get done. It's holiday knitting time, that's what it is, down yeah. to the crunch. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. name is Sylvie, by the way. Oh, yes, yeah, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> and today is December 12th. It is, yeah. and you're going to see this around December 15th if yeah. the technical gods are smiling upon us. Sometimes yes. we have difficulties for unknown reasons. Yeah, we but... are not techies at all, or I'm not a techie person at all, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> I grew up without computers, so yeah. Anyway, so uh, anyway, welcome to today's podcast. Yeah, so... First, you're going to talk about what we are wearing? Yes. You'd think this is the first time we're doing this. Look at this gorgeous <laughs> sweater, guys. Oh, thanks. This is Apelia by Fair City Knits, and uh, it's in celebration of Apelia, which is an annual one-day-only event in Shetland every year mm -hmm. in the city of Lerwick, and it's a fire festival, and what they do is a whole bunch of fire stuff. I think they have something that they push out into the water. I think so, too. Yeah. Like some kind of a fire. Or a boat. Or, yeah. Some, some kind of a boat they yeah. set on fire and put out into the ocean, and it was to welcome the Viking Raiders or the Norse Raiders when they came to Shetland, and Shetland was... Uh, it was owned or was a province, I guess, of Norway until the mid or late 1400s. So, mm. yeah, so that's their annual celebration. And it's interesting. I love this was an amazing knit by Fair City Knits, and it's using Jameson and Smith jumper weight yarn. Um, mm. The stitch gauge was 32 stitches over four inches, which was amazing. For, it made a really gorgeous <coughs> fabric. And this was a totally addictive knit. I had it done very mm -hmm. quickly. Just because it was just so nice and the colors going together and the pattern just kind of felt intuitive as you were going through. The most difficulty I had, because it was a test knit, was uh, with the arms. I guess I have big forearms <laughs> from all the farming stuff that I do, apparently. Everybody else had no problem, but I was making gauge everywhere. But I guess my forearms are big from all that hauling of hay and water and stuff. So what'd you do? I just stretched it when I was blocking it but because everything was fine there was no problem with the actual test knit because it was making gauge but I just made a comment that my was having difficulty fitting yeah. my arms but I was just wondering if you added a couple of stitches to it or not no nope. okay. I just I just stretched it when I blocked it and I wear it snugly so yeah. that's it but a beautiful it knit show thanks I don't think anyways it looks really nice well if I stretched it <laughs> they're very warm colors yes really like they that. are fire related yes, colors right yes and also there's no archaeological evidence that the Vikings had horns on their hats but I don't know who started that obelix mm -hmm. and what's his oh, name asterix asterix the obelix yeah maybe, maybe them I'm not maybe. sure but anyway they have horns and that's fine but uh, anyway, beautiful sweater. Highly recommend this. So usually, Apelia is celebrated. I don't know if it's a lunar calendar, but it's like mm. the end of January, the beginning of February. So That's I'm not sure funny. how they... That would fall around what you call, if you uh, if you do the, the Wiccan wheel, that would fall under what they call um, Imbolc, which is um, uh, the returning of light. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So anyway, could be. Anyway, that sounds good, but it's the end of January, beginning of February, so if you wanted to make this sweater, you would have enough time to do so, yeah. if you really concentrated on if this one. If you were just monogamous. <laughs> monogamous, what's that? Homogenous. <laughs> Monogamy. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I'm wearing. And Sophie, what are you wearing? I am wearing my Trek. This is from Tin Can Knits, and this was a uh, knit with uh, Briggs and Little Sport. And I love this sweater. I really enjoyed working these different color works. Um, I have some blue, some green, some pink, some yellow. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's really nice. We seem to have an annual Cal every year. Yeah. Then Briggs and Little, because this has been going on for a while, right? Yeah. That was like three this or four years ago? Two, I think right before COVID. Nope. I think it was before that. Really? That long ago? I think it might have been 2018, 2019. Oh, I possibly. Think. Yeah, before COVID, 2019. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> COVID just kind of like screws a year, yeah. up yeah. Our the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it appears that we have knit-alongs yeah. in Bridge and Little. Because last year we did... The local I, Yeah, and I had the last, at the last podcast, I was wearing my Elena. 
But Which even was before was... that, when we used to meet at uh, Jeanette's place, yeah, we had a Briggs and Little cowl then too. And I think that's when I knit my cowl from whole the pattern yes. was going to be like a yes. pattern. I forget the name of the cowl, but yes, I think that's when I knit that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that is a segue into our next our next cowl. <laughs> We'll talk about our current cows in a second, but since we've been yeah. talking about Briggs and Little Cow, um, Briggs and Little is a Canadian wool company. It's the oldest woolen mill in Canada, and it's located at Harvey Station, New Brunswick. Yep. And they have fantastic wool. It's a uh, very uh, what, rustic, I guess, is what some people call it. It's a, just a nice, sturdy, yes. good Canadian woolen spun wool, and With it softens awesome colors. Yeah, they do, <laughs> and they keep extent expanding their color yes. range. And when you um, wash it for the first time or block it for the first time, it softens up. And I love the sweaters that I, I wear a lot of Briggs and Little wool, I, a lot. Yeah, you do. Yeah. The, the sweaters that I make, I wear yeah. quite frequently. So we thought we would do another Briggs and Little knit along that will start on the 15th of January, I think. Uh, I think that's what we <clears> said. <throat> yes, we, we did. Down. We wrote okay. it down. <laughs> the 15th of January, we're going to start a Briggs and Little sweater knit along. So any sweater. You can make adult size sweater and you can join us in our group and Ravelry. We'll start a thread closer to that date for this knit along. And you can talk about the details of purchasing the yarn and the prices. Yeah, and so we, of course, we will have a thread in our Ravelry group. Um, and I mean, you can join and, um, sorry, what am I saying here? <laughs> Basically, you're, you're okay. So this is how the cow works. So any kind of sweater <laughs> using brings a little. Adult size sweater. Yes. And your name will be entered into a draw. However, if you purchase a uh, gains from us, from our shop at grumpysheephappylama.com, your name will .ca. go... .ca. .ca. <laughs> grumpysheephappylama.ca, your name will go in twice. So, for example, if you buy one skein, your name goes in once. once for the draw, once because you bought a skein. If you buy two skeins, your name will go three times. Once for participating, two because you bought two skeins from us, and so on. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Clear as mud. <laughs> So yeah, everybody who participates gets their name put into yes. the draw and your name also gets put into the draw for each skein that you purchase. There you go. Does that make it easier? Yes. Okay. I each... make it complicated for nothing sometimes. That's all right. Because <laughs> we had a slow start too. It was like, oh my God, I think it's the first thing that we ever did. Anyway. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's our cow. Our so that will cow. start the January 15th, 15th of January and it will end the 28th of February. Yes. And then the names will be drawn shortly after that. Yeah. And I hope you join us because yes, so I right. have... Oh, can I talk about my plans then since we're talking about that? Your plans? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Give you know. ideas. Yes. So Trek is an idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> but then there's Mountain, another idea. And then Mountain Mist was one. Yes. I wear that sweater all the time. Yes. Go back a few podcasts because uh, you'll see Robin wearing her Mountain Mist. Yes. yes. And then there's the... Was it called The Weekender by Andrea Mowry that has the zigzags? I knit it in black no, and I have No, that's the, not Weekender. Is was it that Weekender? No. The anyway, it's, it's got zigzags in the top and it's Andrea Maori mm. and it's really pretty. I made that in Briggs and Little Black with... Uh, oh, the throwback. Throwback. Yes. Not throwback. Not oh, I made mine too with the throwback actually. Yeah, in Briggs and Little. Uh, in Briggs and Little. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something else. I don't know. Anyways, show what you're going to do. It feels like a Monday, but it's not. <laughs> So my plan is there is a local, the local person, she used to be local, but she moved to PEI and then she recently mm. moved to Nova Scotia and she's Finn folk or Finn and folk. And her, her, uh, blog is called, oh gosh, her blog is, she's called wood folk now. So she lives in Nova Scotia. She has a blog that's beautiful. She has lots mm. of photography. She lives in the woods and she goes out in nature and she's very, very creative and she has an Etsy shop. Anyway, she uh, just finished designing her very first sweater design. And of course, I love her stuff and want to support her. So I bought the pattern straight away. And um, and I thought it's a tunic, which for me would be like a sweater. But <laughs> because I'm too tall. But I thought what I would do is I would make it into a dress. So I chose, oh, this is the hard part. Of course, yeah. What was the pattern name called again? It was Did called Mithalda. It I looks like it's, it's Mithalda. Midvalda, I guess. Okay. It's got a D with a stripe through it, so which or a, a mm -hmm. strike, a strike, stroke through it. So it looks like it's a D, but it's actually pronounced as a T. So it's Mithalda. Um anyway, it's a is that all it's called? Just Mithalda. Yeah. It's a tunic, color work in the yoke, 
and straight away it has five colors that she uses but I'm only going to use four mm -hmm. and straight away I was going for my browns and my grays and I thought no I need to get out of that my and friend Joe would hit me and tell me and I couldn't do green either no because you like green and I have a lot of green yes. in my wardrobe so I was trying to really go outside my she did. box and I <laughs> did I had to ask Sylvie for verification to make sure the colors go together because they're not what I would normally choose mm -hmm. so my main color is going to be plum that's the main color of the sweater oh yeah and Sylvie will put a picture yeah. of the of the tunic up here with a link it'll be in the down bar the link of our of the pattern itself so that'll be it and then the yoke will have it'll blend into this color which is kind of going to be like a border and then this will be the background for the border you can't really understand it but you might see it and then this will be the contrasting uh stuff they have trees in it yeah. and uh, little splashes of color so in the pattern itself she used fox color like a, a reddish kind of rust Orgy, i guess yeah so that'll be in place of that so these are my out of my box completely colors. out of robin's yes <laughs> so wish me luck i hope it turns out but that's what i'll be knitting for this cow i think it will more than we think seeing it that way you're like oh really but i think I think it's going to be okay. I, I think it's going to so. turn out nice. Thanks. I yeah. hope so. All right. So what are we talking so, about? Oh, so we're talking about our current cows, right? Yeah. So we kind of skipped over that. So yeah, we were talking about our brace and little cows. So currently what we have going on, or do we want to talk about our next future cow before going into currents? We guess we can talk about our next future cow. <laughs> <laughs> Which we've mentioned many times over and over, which yeah. is till the cows come home. Uh, and that will start, when did we say? The 8th of January? Yes. So because I think it's just in real life, I think it might just be me and Sylvie doing this. But oh, there might be, be nice. others. It would be nice for others to join us because it is a beautiful cow. It is. So but because we're doing it in person, we thought we would choose our date to suit us. So yeah. it's going to be the 8th of uh, January we're going to start. Mm -hmm. So we can have a little cast on party. <laughs> A little tiny one with yeah. tea and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be with the sock club that we had in the fall, which was aut autumnal colors. Yeah. So and that was done by Evie Knits. So she did a really, a really, really nice job. job. Yeah. So we're going to get her to do it again yeah. later on. Yeah. So that's going to be that cow. And okay, so that's uh, yeah, three, four skeins of sock yarn is till the cows come home by Lyrical Knits. We only have three, so we're gonna each have to find a fourth. Yeah, we're thinking either brown or black, like a dark chocolate brown. Yeah, <coughs> or dark black. chocolate brown. Mm -hmm. I think really the dark nice. brown would go, yeah, better. With yeah, auto autumnal colors. <laughs> See that three times really <laughs> no. Yeah, so we think we're gonna do that. Yeah, and Sylvie's gonna be doing a, a no buy January, so she has no how many days? January. No spend January. She has so many days to buy that that yes. yarn. Yeah, well, I have until December 31st. 31st. Yes, you do. <laughs> you do. Find the yarn and purchase it. Yeah. It's kind of like cheating, though, isn't it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so then, okay, so our current cows are, we have a, what is our current cow? I don't we remember. We still have the Christmas prep along. Yes, we do. Yeah. And that uh, ends, did we say January 1st or December, December 31st? December 31st, yep. Because there's always late present giving, yes, of right? Course. So December 31st is when that one ends. Yeah. And then we also have a finish those whips yeah. so you can make room for new ones. For the new cows coming. <laughs> yeah. And that's all, all the information is found in our thread or in our, yeah, yeah thread. Yeah. In our, in our, our group. group. That's the word. Oh my goodness. Sorry guys. I don't know why, but we've been having, yeah, it's the starts. end of the year. We're busy with everything. It's I think the I'm, wind. We oh. had incredible, like, it's too bad it was on Wednesday because like I'm Winnie the Pooh, it's Wednesday. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true, right? Eh? Last night. The wind was so, mm. it was so, there's so it many people scary. without power. We're really lucky that we have power. There yeah. Are, I don't know how many people have lost power. We're very lucky, but there were crazy winds. We had freezing rain. We had snow, freezing rain, and everything was fine until it got dark. And usually after the sun sets, it gets really quiet and yeah. the wind dies down. But last night was the polar opposite. And I kept waking up because I kept thinking, is this the sound you're supposed to hear if it's going to be a hurricane or, or a tornado? Or a tornado. Yeah. So I kept waking up, is this the sound of the train? Mm. <laughs> so... Anyway, the wind was unreal. Yes. And I didn't even look outside to see how many parts of our roof that we lost because I'm sure we've lost shingles all over the front yard and stuff. But I'm going to blame the wind because it's kind of muddled our brain. That's a good excuse. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so have patience with us or you can laugh with us or at us. It's fine. But uh, anyway, blah. All right. Well, then we're going to go and we're done with our cows, right? Yes.
So then we're gonna go into our finished, finished objects. objects. <laughs> I actually have a couple. I have one. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Go ahead. Okay, so my finished object is, oh, this was, okay. Last time we had our podcast, I was working on these socks and these were, this was a sock yarn I had done with Sharon at uh, Grin Sheep in BC on Vancouver Island. So I finished those socks up and this is just a vanilla sock, toe up, fish lips, kiss heel, uh, 2.25 millimeter needles and I cast on 68 stitches um, and they're done and they're comfy and they fit and I will wear them. Mm. So those are done. I also finished um, Anna Knitter. She's a oh, podcaster yes. too. She's so cute. She's from <laughs> Germany. She has the best laugh. She's uh, If you listen to her giggle, she's got a really cute giggle. I really <laughs> like it. She doesn't giggle that often, but she's got a really nice sound when she does. So she had... She loves to knit socks, and so she thought this year she would have an Advent uh, mm -hmm. knit-along, uh, but a mystery knit-along for socks. And it's her very first pattern that she's had published, and she did nine days of Advent. So you had enough time to go through all the clues, and then you have enough time to knit up your socks in time for Christmas. So uh, that was, it was a lot of fun. And with the cowl, or with the mystery, every day, sorry, I'm trying to find a place for my stuff. I'll pay attention. <laughs> so... With every clue, she gave you the clue, but she also gave you cultural information. So she would say, for Advent, we listen to this song and we normally do this. And then she had a link so you could actually listen to the music that was really popular for that particular day. And she had information about, she's a very strong Catholic in East Germany. And uh, she is a practicing Catholic. And she was talking about the different colors of candles to be lit for Advent and stuff, which is stuff I didn't know because I'm, I'm not Catholic. And I understand that's just a Catholic thing. So I thought, well, that's really cool. I'm going to do that too, just because when I was opening up my Advent stuff, I kind of wanted to make it special and kind mm -hmm. of have it where I was focused or paying attention. You know, what's that? What, what's the you're, word? You're being present. You're being mindful. Mindful. There we go. So I was being mindful. So I lit a candle. I have, luckily, I just happened to have purple and pink and white candles. So I was lighting the appropriate candle every day. Well, I was had, I had one candle that lasted. That's so okay. Just yeah. <laughs> So anyway, this is the sock. This is knit with um, Roots and Rain. There's this, her sustainable sock. Highly recommend this sock, Karen. It was awesome. So Roots and Rain is a local mm. dyer to us. She dyes with natural dyes. And she has this sock here, which is sustainable. And it has nylon, but sustainable nylon. I She has, I can't remember what the description was on the package itself to say why it was sustainable. But it's not anything that's, it's the least harmful to the environment. And she also had cochineal for this, and the cochineal was sustainably uh, um, sourced. Mm. So very nice. And it has so much roundness, this yarn. The stitches I find really pop, and it was so nice to knit with. I'm going to get more of her yarn. Now, for the sock pattern itself. Yes. Can anyone purchase it now? Yes, <clears> they can. Okay. Yes, they can. And a knitter. I'm not sure what that, I'd have to, would have to do a little search for the link for her pattern itself on Ravelry. But uh, yes, anybody can purchase it now. And uh, again, you can do this anytime. Yeah, well, see, you still have nine days before Christmas. So if you want to. You do. You know, you have it's more not than... a mystery, but at least, you know, you could do one a day if you wanted to. You could, because each clue, so the first clue would be the ribbing for the sock. And then it's top down, by the way, and a traditional heel flap, slip stitch heel flap and gusset. But the first clue was the ribbing. The second clue was the section here. The third, the fourth, the heel was the fifth. This section was, oops, sorry, this section was the sixth. I This only had two repeats, but I added two more to make the sock mm. fit my feet. Oh, okay. And then this was the other section here. So next time, if I were to do this, because it's uh, half an inch shorter than I like my socks, I would add probably an extra repeat to each of these sections to give it a little bit of extra length. So I like my socks to be seven Very inches long. long. Yeah. yeah. So... Highly recommend. That's done. Anna Knitter, her mystery Advent MCAL. So cool. awesome. So <coughs> good. Uh, I finished uh, my ooh, my Northern Comfort socks. Again, we were talking just about uh, Roots, and, Roots rain. and Rain. This this pattern was is from Donna Snyder, who is the who is Roots and Rain. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's called Northern Comfort, and it's a two by two ribbing sock pattern. Um, and again, knit with her field sock. I wish I could tell you what the colorway is, but I lost the tag because my cat 
decided to play with it and I said well I'll just let her play with it it's no big deal I'll find it later and I can't find it <laughs> so I don't know the cutaway but it is field sock it is a sport weight it's knit with three millimeter size needle and this is going to be a gift so this is part of my Christmas prep along it's going to be a gift for my boss who doesn't so, watch our podcast who does not watch our podcast <laughs> I mean I think she knows I do this I, didn't, I haven't told her so <laughs> she knows I am a knitter though but uh yeah, so uh, these are going to be gifted to her. They're very, very nice and soft. Yeah. Yeah. I like the color. Yeah, so do I. It's got a really nice depth of shade to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, but there's like a little bit of speckles of darker grays. Yeah. And it's, that's very nice. Yeah. I think she used uh, gray yarn. She oh, dyed over gray maybe, yarn. Oh, eh? Yeah, I think so. Anyways, yeah. So Beautiful. these are our field socks. So and Roots and Rain. Roots and Rain. Etsy. Yeah, yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I guess we can provide a link down in the bottom. Of course, for her yeah. Too. yeah, yeah, to her shop. All right. So do you have another finished? No, that's it for finished. I have lots of whips. Oh, well, not lots. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not lots. Well, we're going to our our whips then. Yes, we can. And so, speaking of Briggs and Little, can I can I talk about my of course, work process? Of course. So my son wanted me to knit something for his teacher for Christmas. So here's another purple on <laughs> Christmas knitting. Um, so I took out my trusty, sorry guys, salt water mitts. Yes, this lovely book here, um, salt water mitt. I've already knit a few mittens in here, which are very nice. But I decided to, for this time around, knit the the big diamonds. But uh, it's this one here, the, the Forever, I think it's called. Anyways, so using Briggs a little. This is Heritage. This is leftover from my Alina sweater that I wore at the last podcast. So it's the oatmeal, which is the light brown with the rose color. So I still have the thumb to do, and another the other mitt. <laughs> This is what it looks like. Nice. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on right now. Good. Yeah. I'm making beautiful. Thank you. These are the tinsel, the West Yorkshire spinners. Are they gonna be striped like that all the way? Did no, they? I didn't. Yeah, I think so. But Ooh, I didn't know it was nice. gonna be stripey. So this is the uh, vintage tinsel socks I just cast on this morning, so I could have something to knit on while I was here talking. But yes, so this is the vintage tinsel. Again, toe up, 2.25 millimeter needle, the usual vanilla socks that I do. Yeah. And be fish lips kiss heel again. So that's this. Very nice. Thanks. You want to talk about your other whip? Well, the other whip is I'm doing the advent sock. I thought you had finished your sock. You just finished one? Just one. Yeah. Oh, I thought you finished both of them. No. Oh, look at me. Okay. No, because that's I only do two stripes a day, and it's only. Oh, I've days. been working on the. I've been working on both socks. Oh no, I li I'm a process person. Um, I like to do one sock at a time. I don't like doing two socks at one time. Okay, well, I'm, you want to show yours? I can show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, here's my advent sock. This is from the Cozy Knitter. She yeah. has 24 stripes that she dyes, different stripes, and this is my third year, I think it is, doing her Christmas uh, advent sock yarn. Love it. So I've been doing two stripes a day because I want to finish this by today, which is the 12th. Right. So my toe didn't count. I started, my toe was done. And this is just regia, an oatmeal color, just a light color for my, just a neutral. And I started this before December 1st and then I've been knitting December 1st. And the heel, the fish that's kiss heel counted along with the stripe. So that was knit in one day along mm. with two of my stripes. And the same thing with the ribbing. That counted as part of my two stripe thing so I could have this done. And then, oh, I do. And then I started the toe last night because the toes don't count. <laughs> so the toe is there. Oops, I have my yarn joined so I can start my first two stripes tomorrow. So I've been doing the same thing. However, I've been doing two. I've been doing them at the same time, I guess you can say. So I'm just starting on the leg. So that. So when you kept saying you're doing two stripes, you were doing, okay. I didn't. She kept saying, I'm doing two stripes, but I didn't see how, why wasn't she finished if she were doing two stripes? She is, but on two separate socks. Yeah, we we weren't clear on our communication, no, I guess. No. <laughs> but I'm like, I have. I'm like, I'm technically day 16. I I'm didn't like, how get can you that. be already done? I thought she was finished, but she only did finish the one. Yeah, two stripes a day. <laughs> anyway, so it's getting there. So we'll finish at the same time, probably. Yes. So, yeah. So I'm working on that every day. <laughs> Oh, my. 
I think we say the same thing, but different, and so we don't understand, but we're saying the same thing. Yeah, we spend a lot of time <laughs> trying to figure stuff out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> makes it interesting. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a word. <laughs> Oh goodness, yeah, I like with my husband too. The technical person, the not so tech, not the technical, not not that you're technical. The, I'm the, the math, math person the, yes, and the, the artsy fartsy person. <laughs> yeah, sometimes like we compliment each other, but sometimes yeah. we just don't get it, and that's okay. It yeah, just makes it more interesting, right? Yeah. What is that? Uh, it's two solitudes, right? That book by Robertson Davies, but the French and the English two solitudes. Oh well, there's that too. There's that too. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so my other, do you have another? I have it. Oh, oh, I have many. I know you have My many. star cardi. How's I'm that not, going? I'm not, well, <laughs> I'm not going to show you because you won't perceive a difference. There uh, is a difference. I finished the second sleeve. Okay. But you won't, it, it still looks the same because December 1st came and when December 1st came, all <laughs> oh, hell done broke loose. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So... <laughs> I and the Strom cardigan, I brought it to show you, but I haven't really touched it. But theoretically, it is oops, theoretically, it oh, is you're coming along good. Well, I haven't touched it since the last time we talked about it. There it is, Yay. that's the length that I was talking about. And, oh, yes. and uh, unlike Sylvie, I'm, ch I'm changing the frequency of my increases uh, to make them last longer because I my arm is. Farmers. It's farmer arms, arms <laughs> but it's fairly increases, as, you know, kind of evenly. It doesn't just increase all of a sudden and then go straight. So I'm mm. trying to, everybody's body different, is different. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing for mine. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on the second one. <laughs> that's good. So I finished the, uh, this is the second sleeve. I showed the first sleeve uh, the last time. I finished with the increasing. So now I'm just doing the straighten it until I get to the length, the length that I want, which is 18 and a half inches. Oh, well, yeah, because so. we had to remeasure you. Yeah. Because she had some weird number, and I said, I think your arms are longer I than think that. I was at, I was going to do 17. 17? I think I was going to do 17. Okay. Yeah. And I said, Sylvia, I think you need to rethink that. So I got her to measure me rather than me having to try to measure myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, it's yeah. Gonna, so hopefully I, it's going to be good. Oh, I think it will. And if it's too long, it's, it's bottom no up. big deal. I could just do this if I wanted to. I guess so. Because it's a bottom-up sweater, so it's not as easy to make alterations. Yeah, it's okay. If it's. I don't think it'll be too long. And you know what? It's okay. If it's like this here, I kind of like that, oh, that kind of look too. It's cozy. Cool. I like the bracelet length. Yeah. Either or. Like this here is good, but if it goes down longer, it's fine too. So, how's that coming along your beautiful shawl? My beautiful shawl. So this is Sylvie. Well, <laughs> it's Sylvie's influence. She's into um, the wheel. Well, it's, it's... What do you call it? The Wiccan wheel. The Wiccan wheel. So she's well, into... Yeah. Which is fine, because as a, you know... I like to observe the Wiccan wheel, like the, the different changing of this it kind of matches the changings of the seasons and it makes you reflect on things and stuff. But anyways. Yes. <laughs> and I appreciate different things from a more scientific point of view. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just don't have words for them except for like winter solstice, for example, <laughs> which is the shortest day of the year, which yeah. is December 21st. Yeah. So I am trying, I all of a sudden, because apparently a whole bunch of Advent things weren't enough to keep me <laughs> occupied, which it turns out totally backfired, but whatever. <laughs> I, um, I wanted to make a shawl for the winter solstice. And I found this lovely pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's called Tree Girth. I'm going to be wrong. Oh, it is. Ha <laughs> uh -huh. Tree Girth pattern. And it is by Kit DeWitt. And uh, it's a nice pattern. And because of my revelation for how much wool I actually have unbeknownst to me <laughs> until I did a reckoning or some kind of accounting, I <clears throat> thought I'm not going to buy yarn for this. And I thought of this yarn that I had in stash since about 2012, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful stuff. And it's green because that's not my color at all. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's Madeline Tosh. It's this stuff. And it's a beautiful green. It's a singles yarn. And it's been in my stash, like I said, since about 2012. Because I kind of remember when I purchased it. I love the undertones too. Oh, me too. <clears throat> it's just a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. green. So I thought I'm going to use that. Because I have four skeins. I think I'm only going to need three. But okay. the fourth skein, I'll find something oh, yeah. to make with it. So this, it's hard to show. It's a pie shawl. And it's kind of hard to show mm -hmm. them <laughs> when it's like this. Oh, yeah. Especially on the needle like that. Yeah. I mean, you know. So it starts off with an eye in the center. And it's a lace shawl. And it kind of like a star pattern there. And then it goes out to 
a leafy pattern mm -hmm. and then it goes into I guess another leafy pattern <laughs> and then another leafy pattern and this is the I do six repeats total of this last leafy pattern and then I start with the edging which will be knit on sideways huh. but I really like this shawl and I'm hoping it stretches out to be bigger than it appears on the needles right now because now it just looks like a grocery shopping bag <laughs> I'm sure it will stretch up nicely. I hope so. So anyway, that's my other whip. I think that's it for whips for me. Yeah. Current, like working on stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. So we talk about our advent stuff. Sure. How about we talk? So this would technically be spinning, but we'll go more into the advent stuff because, as you know, we've talked about this on our last podcast. We we're part of two. Indie dyers, I guess, mini skeins and fiber advent calendar. And we've also done an exchange with our friends, again, with the mini yarn, mini skeins and fiber. Yes. So we've been having a blast. A blast. A, a blast. Um, every day, every morning, I hear ping, 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 ping. Because <laughs> we're all like, oh my God, did you see this color? <laughs> yeah. On the phone is the ping, ping. Yes. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. So Robin, I have actually just leaving mine to the side because I don't know what I want. I don't know what my plans are for the quest uh, for the one uh, uh, fiber on a quest for fiber. On a quest for fiber, she's a BC dyer, right? Yes. In Vancouver, anyway, she's in BC. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do probably like I'm going to separate it. I'm just going to do like a spin, like mix it all up and just spin it like that, like a combo spin. Yeah. For the front exchange, because it's so um, different. different, which is awesome, and because yeah. there's different fibers that I'm, I'll get to experiment that I've never even touched before, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. So I'm just admiring them right now and trying to decide what I'm going to do. So, But Robin has been having a blast spinning them as she was been opening them. <laughs> I've been having fun because my plan was every morning I'll get up with my coffee and have my coffee and I'll light my candle, my little purple yeah. candle for the first two weeks of Advent and then it's going to go pink and then purple and white. So I've been lighting my little candle and then opening up my packages one by one. So that would be two fiber packages and two yarn packages. Yeah. So then my plan was to spin them and keep keep everything up to date. So I had two yarn packages to open, two fiber packages that I wanted to spin every day, and then my two sock cowls mm -hmm. for Advent. That too, yeah. That I wanted to do, plus my shawl that I wanted to do in the evening. So I had a lot on my plate, and then I started to worry because I kept up to, with everything for about six days, I guess, and then I started to fall behind because, you know, life. And yeah. I was kind of stressing about that, and I thought, that's really stupid to stress about exactly. that. Exactly. It, it is what it is, and I will just let it go, and I will have fun with it, and... I have a backlog. I haven't even opened up all my quest for fires because, because, what am I going to do with it when I open it? I want to spin them in order. Oh, I see. And okay. if I take them out of the package and I open it, then I have to find a place to put them. Okay. And then I'm going to lose track of which one to spin next. So I stopped when I was falling behind. I have two open that I have yet to spin, oh. and I won't open up the other ones until, which just delays the the whole. Yeah, it does for sure. Happy factor, right? Yeah. So and then for our friends stuff. I'm behind two, three days, maybe. That's not too bad. But I'm opening it because everybody is expecting that you're opening it and I don't want to get spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I don't want to see stuff and then go, oh, wait, I didn't open that yet. And then find out I want to open it up with everybody Or hear what the fiber content is yeah, and say, oh my then, God. Yeah, I exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I will show you quickly yeah. what it is. And I actually enjoyed it. <laughs> I thought she would spin them and show send us pictures because then it would give me an idea of what it would look like. So it's like, oh, this is great. This is what can I do now then if it's going to turn out like that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nobody else is spinning. It's just me. No, we're, we're waiting for her to show, her to show us what it looks like. <laughs> so here's the thing too is that we had this beautiful, uh, from our friend Denise, she really makes really oh, nice yes. Rolex with her blending board. And which just calls to me and says, I want to be spun with my support spindle. <laughs> but I said, no, I'm spinning everything the same. So what I'm trying to do is I want to spin for a sweater. So I'm trying to spin everything exactly the same, the same weight, the same ratios on my spinning wheel, right. everything. So I had to tell my roll eggs that no, you will not be spun with a support <laughs> spindle. You will be spun on my spinning wheel. Just like everybody else, you're not so special. Everybody else has to be spun the same way. But then... 
Jane. Oh, my God. She throws the wrench into things and gives us stuff that can't be spun the same. <laughs> so, you know, but that's the only special case because everybody else everybody is going to be spun good. the yes. same. So, I will show you. This was day one. This is one. really, okay, yeah. I thought you were going to talk about Jane's, but Oh, yes. I will get to Jane's because <laughs> Jane. <laughs> so, this is Daisy. This is the first yeah. one that she gave us and it was Merino and Sparkle stuff. And this was really nice to spin. And yeah. I have a whole bunch of that. And I'm spinning all of these guys that I'm talking about today. I am spinning them to a sport weight yarn. I am spinning them on my Lendrum. A ratio of kind of my usual woolen-ish kind of spin. Uh, Longish draw. Yeah. Medium, so your go medium draw. Your my go-to default yeah. spinning. 8 to 1 for the singles. And then 10 to 1 for the plying. And it's an all two ply. And I have a plan for these guys. So this was day one. Can I know what your plan is? Did you tell me? I can't. I wrote it down because I can't remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find the piece of paper because there are three things I have planned and I can't. Remember. I get confused which okay. one is for what. So when I'm solid with my plan, maybe next podcast sure. I will tell you and with pictures and stuff. Mm -hmm. So this wasn't part of the advent calendar. I, I don't remember that. No. So I had bought, because I really liked my Tibetan spindles from Straddle Creek Woodworking, I guess Straddle yeah. Creek. He, when he sent me my second Tibetan spindle, he concluded some fluff from oh. Psalm 23. And I was waiting for December 1st. It was killing me to wait. It was killing me to wait. I couldn't wait anymore. So I was supposed to spindle spin this. And I grabbed it to spin on my wheel oh. to help keep me from getting into trouble by getting into my stuff before I was supposed to get into it. So I spun this. So I'm counting that as part of my advent thing. So this is day zero. <laughs> so, okay. Basically. And then this was from Denise. Beautiful. Yeah, that's gorgeous. This was nice. This is Corydale with Firestar. This was so nice to spin. Mm -hmm. It was just dreamy. So that was beautiful to spin. And then I'm not going to go. Oh, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> this is Coopworth. And this is from Grin Sheep in BC. And uh, that was nice to spin too. So mm -hmm. that's over. I'm not going to go through it day by day. I'll just show you what I was spinning. This, I think, was from Sylvie. Yeah. That was, oh, look at that. Day five. I'm in order. Day five. That was from Sylvie. And this yeah. is Three Water Farm. I love them. Three Water Farm. Etsy, yeah. and they have their own website. This was really nice. And this was, was it day six? Wendy, day maybe? Day seven. Where's, oh, Wendy. Yes, there's Wendy. Mm. I love Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. It was Camel and Silk. Wendy, you saw our podcast. I think you know what we know, what we feel about that camel. <laughs> that may be why she gave it to us. Yeah, she got it for some cheap. But who knows if I don't remember the podcast came out. That's maybe true. She could have been doing it for like a giggle. Yes, yes, she would. That would be Wendy. I don't love spinning camel. <laughs> and I thought maybe the silk will help. No, it didn't help. But the thing is, it's so beautiful when it's done. It's but it took color. me two. This is the reason why I've fallen behind. <laughs> Because I was procrastinating. It took me so long to spin 28 grams of camel and silk because but it's, nice. it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I just don't love spinning it. See, I was hopeful because I was mixing with silk and I thought, okay, well, if it's mixed thin with another fiber, maybe I'll you'll love be it. Okay. And right? then I get a t bing. <laughs> and all I get, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Said, yeah, it makes it doesn't make a difference. But it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. And which is it's good gorgeous, yeah. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, thank you, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what you really is. Yes, thank you. So, anyway, I'm not going to give a spoiler, but it won't be the last time you see Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to talk about Daisy's next thing, because she did. Mm. I'm spinning the other portion of it, but she had provided some merino and silk that's on my wheel right now. And she also had a little blurb of this because she wanted to try carding it herself. She did a beautiful yeah. job. This was, it drafted so nicely. I wish I had more, to be honest mm. with you. It drafted so beautifully, and it which made, you know, my spinning come out very evenly. Yeah. I'm so impressed. Thank you, Daisy. This was really lovely. Yeah, I really, really loved it. So if she wants to do this again, <laughs> she knows where <laughs> <laughs> This was beautiful. And then, oh yeah, and then Jane. Jane. This is awesome. Because I don't think none of us had spun that blend before. No. I've spun a little bit of linen, like the regular yeah. long linen. But um, Jane was the um, the cure for spinning camel. <laughs> 
I wasn't supposed to spin this yet because I wanted to spin in order. Mm -hmm. But when I saw this, I had to spin it straight away because it just made me laugh. And it is a mixture of toe fiber, which is short line linen, and wool. So this one is 80% uh, toe linen and 20% wool. I don't know what the breed of wool is. It just says wool. Yeah. But, oh my God, that was so much fun. Sorry, that's the end of when I was tying my stuff. And do you know, like, when you had Barbie or Ken or whatever, and we, ha we had these things called Jane West. I had Jane West. My brother oh, yeah. had whatever the male character was. And he had a lasso that was kind of held out. And it was still in that circle for the lasso to catch things, which isn't how it happens in real life. But this was so stiff. When I blocked it and I hung it to dry, <laughs> I picked it up off the off the little hook where I was drawing it. It still stayed in the exact same shape. Like, And it reminded me of that lasso from when I was a kid with Jane West and whatever his name was. But it's just got so much character. But you feel it and... Okay, maybe not so much that I'm feeling again, but the other one, it still, it still has some kind of softness to it. Kind of. It's kind it's of rustic, but still, it's so weird to explain. It's like spinning jute. So, yeah. I spun jute. Yeah. Is that how you say it? I guess so. That string kind of stuff? Yeah. That's what it feels like. But it was so much fun to spin, and it was easy to spin. It drafted beautifully. So that was the one from Jane's. So that was 14 grams, and this is the other 14 grams. And this is 50 toe linen with 50% wool. This. Mm, this is the one that's much... Yeah, drapier, if yeah. you could call it. It was yeah. still pretty stiff until I kind of was rough with it because I was laughing. <laughs> anyway, this is beautiful. I had so much fun with this. And so Sylvia and I were discussing it. She hasn't spun it yet, but yeah. I was very excited and she was, you know, feeling it going, oh, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. So we think what we're going to do is we're going to get some, we're going to have an all Canadian made uh, yeah. blend and we're going to play with the blends later on. Um, so we can get some tow linen from a place in Nova Scotia. And of course I have sheep in the backyard. So we're thinking about making some blends and having it in our shop. We'll let you know when that happens, yeah. but that's kind of a future plan for some time in 2022. So keep your eyes peeled. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. I have to say, I really, I like doing the sock yarn clubs, but I find that I get more bang for my buck with the fiber ones because I have something to do every day. Oh, I like them both. I like equally. them both too, but I like, oh, equally, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. I guess last year I liked it just as much, maybe because I had a project I was making at the same time, because last oh, year we maybe. made that blanket. Yes, that's true. We were, as we were opening up a skein, or a little mini skein, we were knitting it right away, because we did the habitation throw. Yes. It's true. I think maybe next time. curious handmade. We should have something I'm going to have something planned. This time here, I was like, you know what, I'm going to wait and see what I get. Yeah. But yeah, it would be nice to knit something as we go to. Because so that time, makes it more... Engaging, Special. I yeah, suppose. I guess yeah. So. yeah. 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 So, whereas these things, I opened it and then I spun it ideally straight away for the first six days. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are the other ones. And this is from On a Quest for Fiber. So, I got yes. 20 grams every day. And I guess I chose the merino option. I didn't know I had options. Maybe I was in a hurry. and Yeah, because she had the BFL and I, I have the BFL option. So, yeah. the colors are different. So, she, when she was showing me what she got, I was like, well, that's different than mine. How come? Yeah. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> So this, Ooh, is, this is pretty. It is pretty. So this is spun exactly the same way as the other ones, but they're 100% merino superwash. And I I'm really enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Really enjoying it. It's nice to spin every morning and spin one of these things. And this we'll talk about later. Just pay attention to these colors <laughs> yes. because this was the inspiration for something we'll talk about in a bit. And then this color. So there we go. I have yeah. a lot of fun. And that's that's our oh, event. I have what? one more thing for spinning. Oh, what did you spin? I'm t I'm sampling for our sweater spin. Oh, thing. yes. So I have this. Uh, I'm trying to make a loop. <laughs> I have this uh, black because I'm doing a two color. It's that skein deer sweater. How I can't. I can't remember, remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's an all-over colorwork sweater with just kind of a traditional kind of like spots on it. Yeah. And then colorwork someplace. Anyway, we've, we've talked about it before. Maybe we can put a picture in again. Yeah. But we were supposed to be doing a sweater. How long it's going to take us to do a sweater spin from scratch, like from the raw fleece all the way all through the to the yeah. end. And I have this black. And when I started to spin it, I was spinning it or blending it on my card or my drum carter and then spinning it. And it wasn't so nice to spin i had all these little bits in it so i oh. kept stopping to pick stuff off and it doesn't look very smooth it looks all right but it doesn't look very smooth 
So then I thought, I wonder what's going on there. Let me try combing it, which mm -hmm. unfortunately makes a lot of waste, but it sure makes the spinning experience better. Okay. And it makes it more even, which I kind of want because this is the contrasting color. So I would like it to show up nicely. More, of course. Yeah, I think it'll still look woolen. And again, it's a two ply, same ratio as before. I guess that's kind of my, my default ratio. So, yeah. but I think most of us two ply is. Yeah, Anyways. yeah. So that's what I've been doing. So I was just kind of sampling that. So more will follow, I guess, yeah. after Christmas because I'm busy with other spinning things that I have to catch up on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you have anything else? I don't know. Okay. I'm good for now. I'm just going to mention this one book. Uh, our friend Lynn watches us and she likes it when we mention books. Oh, nice. So this is a magazine that I subscribe to. Uh, this is my second issue. It's actually the second printed issue, and it's called Tiny Studio. It's from New Zealand, I believe. Mm. And what's really cool about this particular issue is Judy Kavanaugh has an article oh, in it good for her. on tablet weaving. So there's Judy Kavanaugh. She's a friend of ours. She's a spinner. She, she's the one who took that original photo of our of Grumpy Sheep Happy Lama. That's true, yeah. In our barn, because she yeah. would come to our um, shearing day. So she has an article on here on tablet spinning. Tablet weaving, sorry. And here she is someplace uh, spinning and weaving. And this is her article in this magazine. So congratulations, yes. Judy. That's <laughs> awesome. It was really cool to see you in here. <laughs> so again, that's Tiny Studio Creative Life. And they just started making paper issues that come from New Zealand. And it's uh, quarterly, I believe. Hmm. I think it's quarterly. Nice. Yeah. That's all for books. So, on to shop talk? Yes, we can do shop talk. So, remember um, the colorway that uh, Robin said to keep your That's to right. keep in mind? So, um, in the fall, we had a, a little sock club with Evie Knits, and so we enjoyed that very much, and so did those who purchased the sock. Yeah. Um, so, we decided to go ahead and do one again. Uh -huh. and, but this time, um, it will be with Pretty String. And so she will be dyeing some wonderful colorways for our yarn club. And it will be, the theme will be Arctic. Yes, which was inspired by this. I saw these colors and I remembered my time when I was on Ellesmere Island, way up north. And uh, I thought, oh, those are the colors of cold. <laughs> <laughs> those are the colors of the winter. And yeah. so when I contacted Corinna Pretty String, I said, can we have the theme Arctic? And I sent her some pictures from when I was up there as inspiration and and she uh, was ha she, she was she wanted to run that. off and start doing some samples <laughs> straight away. So we're going to have two different sock bases. It's going to be sock yarn. One is called pretty string a pretty string pretty soft, yeah, which is just a usual superwash merino nylon. The other base that she's going to have, which I've knit with, it was in my ranunculus, oh. was yeah, BFL cashmere and silk. Mm -hmm. So it's a pricier one, but it's beautiful. And the idea is what we were talking about is once we uh, have all three months done, yeah, is to knit a beautiful shawl with it. Yes. And so I will show a picture of the shawl um, for you to see. Um, but that's the plan that that will be the mid along with that particular uh, yarn club. So. And the shawl will be telegram for me for you. Yes. And it's by a local person. Her name is Anya. And she designed this shawl, I guess in 2019, I think it was. And it's lovely. It's a three color shawl. Yeah. It's gorgeous. And we thought it'll this, be perfect. It'll be really nice for, yeah, especially because I think I'm going to spend the money and get the BFL the cashmere silk. silk. Yeah. And I was trying to think of something that would be worthy of that kind of an investment. And this shawl is so that her name on Ravelry is Yarner, the, the Yarner. And then Yarner Me, I think, is her Ravelry ID right. number. But anyway, so that's the shawl we're going to be doing. But the yarn club will the the sign up so the purchasing the pre order. Mm. Gosh, the pre order will start the twentieth of December. Yes, and it will close. When will it close? It'll close after that. <laughs> Date to be determined because uh, we it, we're planning on having it. Um, it'll probably close starting the, in February, right? Well, it has to it has to get mailed out. Mm -hmm. So it'll close. It'll close mid January. There you go. We'll just say the 15th of January, it'll close. We'll have all the info on our website. Too. Yeah. So anyway, the first mail will go out for February. So yes. February, March, April will be the mailing dates. And then we'll start the shawl 
knit along shortly after that. Yeah, and so we'll be able to knit on it in the spring slash summer, and then come fall, we'll be ready to, with fall, winter, we'll be ready with our shawls. So, yes, it'll yeah. be fabulous. Yes. So I hope you join us. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to thank you for coming with us, coming with us, for watching us today, for yes. staying with us. Yes, because, because we've had a hard time talking today. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is, we've been fumbling along. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for staying with us. We hope you will join us again yes. in less than a couple of weeks because we want to do a pre-Christmas podcast yeah. to talk about probably all the same stuff, but updates. And uh, we hope that you have a wonderful week and a half. And uh, take care, have fun, stay safe. Yes. Wear a mask, wash your hands, all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye.